everyone, as promised, here is the next bookshelf tour. This is going to be focusing on animal memoirs and animal fiction and fiction and memoirs. So let's get started. First we have The Puppy Diaries by Jill Abramson. I got that because it was a bargain book and I had read it about a year and a half ago or so and I liked it. We have The Scent of the Missing by Susanna Charlson. A Lion Called Christian by Anthony Bork and John Rendell. Homer's Odyssey by Gwen Cooper about a blind cat. We have Making Rounds with Oscar, and this is by David Dosa, M.D. It's about a cat working with hospice patients. Last Dog on the Hill by Stephen Duno. Those ones I've read. A Dog Named Boo, which I have not read, and that is by Lisa J. Edwards. The Man Who Lived. With Wolves by Sean Ellis. And I read that. I liked it. Good study on wolves and wolf packs. Winging It by Jennifer Gar Jenny Gardner. Sorry. A Friend Lake Henry, which deals with a young boy with autism. I think it's set in like England. It's a good book. The Cat Who Went to Paris. have that series. We got that one. It's by P Peter Gethers. A Cat Abroad. And The Cat Who Will Live Forever. We have Puppy Chow is Better Than Prozac by Bruce Goldstein. The Lost Dogs by Jim Gorantz. It's about Michael Vick's trial and the dogs that were rescued from the dog fighting ring. We have Wallace, which is also by Jim Gorant. <clears throat> Sorry, my arm's getting a little sore. Alright, we have Marley and Me. This is actually the book that got me started in reading about animal memoirs. I, memoirs. And I did get to meet John Grogan a couple of times, once in Ann Arbor in 08, and then again in 2009 in Grand Rapids. I took my mother-in-law that time, so she got to get an autograph from him. And I believe, I think these two copies are signed, or maybe just one of them is. We have A Little Big Life by Dean Koontz. It's about his dog Trixie. We have Another Boy with Autism and His Golden Retriever, Cowboy and Willis. Or Wills, I'm sorry, by Monica Holloway. That's a good book, like that one. Steve and Me by Terry, his wife Terry Irwin, which documents Steve Irwin's life and their children and his adventures on the Crocodile Hunter show. We have Jungle Jack by Jack Hanna. It profiles his life working at the Columbus Zoo. We have Zamba by Ralph Helfer. The True Story of the Greatest Lion That Ever Lived. We have Thunder Dog by Michael Hingson with Susie Flory. This is about a blind man and his his guide dog during 9-11. He worked in the, the towers. It's just about his journey getting down the stairs. And it kind of recounts him getting his first guide dog when he he was I think he was born blind as a baby and just kind of chronicles his life and how things have changed for the blind it was really interesting and it wasn't a very long read either so moving down here we have little boy blue and that is by Kim Caven I haven't read it yet but look at here it says that a portion of this book's proceeds will go to the Pet Finder Foundation, working to ensure every pet has a forever home. And I actually have that app on my phone for one day when I get a cat or a dog, maybe one day. Oogie, 
The Dog Only a Family Could Love by Larry Levin. That's a good book, too. We Bought a Zoo by Benjamin Mee. This actually was made into a movie. I thought the movie was alright. It wasn't, it wasn't great, but it was probably as good as it was going to get. We have Until Tuesday, which I haven't read yet. That's by Luis Carlos Montalvan. We have A Man for All Species. This is a book by Mark Monroe. Marone. And he had a show called uh, Pet Keeping with Mark Marone. And I first got into it because they talked about rabbits and guinea pigs. And, one of the, and it was really cool because I have a rabbit and a guinea pig. And eventually I will introduce you to them. Dewey by Vicki Myron with Brett Witter. It's a cute, cute book. The Good Good Pig by Cy Montgomery. See, all these different memoirs about different animals, and I learned so much. Not just dogs and cats, but, you know, pigs, lions, owls, parrots. Wesley the Owl by Stacy O'Brien. Alex and Me by Irene Pepperberg. Heart of the Pride. This deals with lions also. Just like Zamba and a lion called Christian. This is by Kevin Richardson. Not the guy from the Backstreet Boys, but uh, someone else. <laughs> the Dog Who Lived and So Will I by Teresa Reine. Or Rhine. The Puppy That Came for Christmas by Megan Ricks. This is a cute book about a childless couple who... Basically, they teach uh, puppies how to be guide dogs, and I think they went through a couple of them before they actually got, they just went out and got their own dog, because it was too hard and heartbreaking to be able to give the dog back after all that training, they get attached to the dogs, so, yep. Casey to the Rescue, I haven't read this one yet, it's by Alan, it's by Ellen Rogers. It's about a paraplegic young adult who gets help from a capuchin monkey. I think his name is Casey. And if you remember, if you've ever seen Monkey Trouble, if you want to see a capuchin monkey, if that is in fact a capuchin monkey, then that would be a good reference to watch Monkey Trouble. Alright, we have Following Atticus. That's funny, another To Kill a Mockingbird reference, just like a dog named Boo. This book is by Tom Ryan. I haven't read that one either. <laughs> We have A Dog for All Seasons, a memoir by Patty Sherlock, which was a good read. And I learned a lot about farming and using um, border collies when it comes to how they round up sheep. So I did learn. I learned some stuff that I didn't know. Enslaved by Ducks. Now this by Bob Tart. He's a local author. By local, I mean that he actually lives in the town that I grew up in, Lowell, Michigan. So... I met him for the first time back in October of 08. He came to Muskegon, so I thought that was so cool, and we chatted up. I actually was on his show well, uh, What Were You Thinking? It's a show about um, small animals and other exotic pets. So I was on that back in November of 08 when I had first gotten Toby, my guinea pig. This is actually a new er, edition, paperback edition that he gave me because I've been to a lot of his signings. A very faithful follower of Bob Tart. We have Foul Weather, which is the sequel. Goes on more about his crazy life with his funny animals. He's got... Uh, Kitty Corner, which just came out like a year ago. It's about all of his cats. He also has birds, ducks. Where um, I don't know if he has rabbits anymore. But anyway, um, this is Almost Home by Joan Bauer. Bauer. <laughs> okay, we have by W. Bruce Cameron. We have A Dog's Purpose. Good book for seeing from a dog's point of view. Very interesting. And the sequel, A Dog's Journey. And then we have Emery's Gift, which is about a boy and a bear that he finds in the woods. That was also a good read. Alright, we have this one, and this one's got a story to it. Because 
for a time, I was actually quite obsessed with this book. I read it in August of 2011 when I went to my first Hanson concert. Yes, I am a Hanson fan. This is by Sarah Gruen, and I got the audiobook, and I had it playing at work constantly, <clears throat> all, the, all the time at work. And I've seen the movie in the theater like ten times because I developed a crush on Christopher Waltz, who played August. Anyway, <laughs> moving on from that. But yeah, I read that book while I was waiting outside for hours to see Hanson. Um, we have Christmas with Tucker by Greg Kincaid. Now his book, A Dog Named Christmas, is a Hallmark movie that is really cute. And Christmas with Tucker is actually a, it's a prequel. It's a prequel to A Dog Named Christmas. Now we have a sequel called A Christmas Home, which is a conclusion of A Dog Named Christmas. It really wraps up, it wraps up the story. Now we have Rome by Alan Lazar. I haven't read it yet, but this is also a book from a dog's point of view. We also have here another series. It's really cool. It's a detective series with Chet, Chet and Bernie mystery series. We have Dog on it. It's all told from Chet's point of view, and he's, he's the dog. It's really cool. So we got that one. We have There by Hangs a Tail. <clears throat> we have To Fetch a Thief. Damn, this is really packed tight in here. Ugh. We have The Dog Who Knew Too Much. This is cool. I love the color scheme we got. We got orange, black, red, green, and blue. And then I'm not sure what the new one's going to be, the color scheme for that. But it was cool also on the back. You'll see here, each book has, like, here's a picture. You can see it looks like a border collie there. And then there's another, each one has a picture, like, oh, you see his face. So, yeah, that is a border collie. So, each one has a little piece of him, like this one. This one here's got his paw. Uh, this one's got his snout. And this one's just got a wagging tail. Now, in the book, I guess, they're saying, like, oh, we don't know what kind of dog Chet is. I mean, if you look at here, that that looks like the cross between a border collie and, well, a German Shepherd. But look at this. This, well, that kind of looks like a border collie, too. Okay, you know what? I'm going to move on because uh, I'm getting off track here. We have Lost and Found by Jacqueline Sheehan. And I actually had that book, and then I got rid of it. And then I got it again because the sequel came out. We have a picture of this also by Jacqueline Sheehan. We have, now this is the first book I've ever honestly read that, that was from a dog's point of view. So that kind of piqued my interest. Garth Stein wrote The Art of Racing in the Rain. And it does drag a little in parts. I mean, his owner is a race car driver. So there are things that like, you know, I'm not really that into racing. But I'll keep going because the story was beautiful. Now, the story of Edgar Sawfell, I haven't read this, and I've had this for at least probably a couple years now, and I'm going to have to get to this. And that is by David Rowableski. There, I said his name. Kind of crappily. But I said it, kind of. Okay, you know what, I'm just going to set it there, because, pfft, yeah. Are we have Matthew Dix, who wrote the memoirs of an imaginary friend. I haven't read it yet, but... I found this book when I was uh, at an airport in their little uh, bookshop. And I, I mean, like, okay, I gotta get that when I get back home. So, okay. We have Room by Emma Donahue, which was good. I haven't read Memoirs of Geisha. We have Stephen King's Hearts in Atlantis. I have the movie because I absolutely love Anton Yelchin. I have, I think I had just about every movie he's been in. Odd Thomas and Forever Odd, which are by Dean Koontz, which also uh, Odd Thomas is supposed to be a movie that has Anton Yelchin in it, but I don't think uh, anyone's bought it yet, so it's not in the U.S. to come out in the theater. We have To Kill a Mockingbird. And I'm going to stop here and I will continue on because this video is getting long. <laughs> so I will see you momentarily. Have a wonderful, beautiful sunny day.